Howdy, I'm Baron Stone from San Antonio, Texas. This week, Dr. Rixner taught us about sets, which we'll use to keep track of the rocks and missiles in our Rice Rocks games. Now, there are several different operators that can be used on sets, and in this video, I want to demonstrate those for you in a way that will hopefully help you to visualize sets and understand how to manipulate them. This weekend, it got cold outside, so I think tonight would be a good time to stay in, invite over a couple friends, and play an epic game of Settlers of Catan. And this means I need to figure out who I'm going to invite over. Now, as a modern man, I naturally keep track of all my friends via the internet. And it would be convenient if they all use the same social network, but of course they don't. I have some friends on Facebook, a couple other friends who use Google+, and even a few stragglers who are stuck on MySpace. Now, each of these groups of friends represents a set, which is an unordered collection of unique items. In this case, those items are my friends. And a set differs from a list because in a set, there is no order or ranking to the items. There is no number one friend in all of those sets. All of my friends are equally good friends. These three circles represent the sets of my Facebook, Google+, and MySpace friends. The first thing I want to do is combine these separate sets into a single set of all my friends. And if you look closely, you'll notice that I do have some friends in common between the three social networks, so let me rearrange them to more easily show those shared relationships. To combine these sets, I can use the union operator, which will return a single set containing all of the items from the input sets. Since all of these items in a set must be unique, we lose any duplicates so that the resulting set will only have one of every item. Now that I've combined all my friends into one massive set, I need to start narrowing that down to figure out who I'm actually going to invite. Settlers of Catan is only a four-player game because I'm too cheap to buy the expansion packs, so I need to pick three people to invite over to play with me. A good place to start narrowing it down would be to figure out who actually lives nearby. And so to do that, let's look in the phone book. Here's a set representing all of the people in my local phone book. If we overlay the set of all my friends, you can easily see that some of my friends are in the phone book, which means they live nearby, and others are not, so they probably live far away. To get the set of just my local friends, we can use the intersection operator, which will return a set of the items which exist in both the phone book and exist in the set of all my friends. That helped a lot with reducing our set, but we've still got a ways to go. I just saw on David's Twitter account that he's also planning a game night tonight. Except he's planning on playing Munchkin. And Munchkin is a game for nerds. And I can't have any of David's nerd herd invading my civilized evening of the Settlers of Catan. So I think we can safely not invite them. To remove David and his Munchkin playing nerds from my set of friends, I'll use the difference operator. If I call it on my set of friends and I pass it the set of nerds as a parameter, it'll return a set which represents my list of local friends minus any that are in the nerd herd. All right, I think we finally got our set down to a reasonable size. Let's go ahead and invite people. Excuse me for a sec. Sorry, this is rude. Hey, Vern, can't talk long. I'm in the middle of something. Uh-huh. All right, uh, let me call you back. That was my buddy Vern. He just saw on Reddit that I'm planning an epic game of Settlers of Catan for tonight. I wanted to know if he and Jim could come over. Well, let's check that invite list and see if there's still room for them. If we want to check how many items are in the set, we can use the len function. Doing that to my set of friends reveals that I already have three friends in the set, so I can't invite anyone else because that's already a full game. However, I can use the is subset operator to check if the set containing Vern and Jim is already a part of the set of people I plan to invite. And doing so here reveals that, yes, I had already planned to invite Vern and Jim because they're two of my really good friends. Well, I guess I better give Vern a call back. On second thought, games of Settlers of Catan have been known to devolve into explosive arguments and lead to lifelong grudges amongst the players. And I'd hate to lose my friendship with Vern and Jim over a game, so it's probably better if I play with people I don't know as well. But who... Ah, hey, uh, Olivia, can I get a list of some of your co-workers? Here you go. Thanks, that'll work perfectly. Here I have two sets. 
the set of friends I plan to invite, and the set of Olivia's co-workers. And I've overlapped them to show that there are shared elements, so you can see that Vern and Jim exist in both sets. If I use the symmetric difference operator on the sets, it'll return a set which contains the elements of my invite set that are not in the set of Olivia's co-workers, and all of the elements from Olivia's co-workers that are not in the set of friends I plan to invite. This is basically the opposite of what you get when you use the intersection operator. Now we've built the perfect set of friends for Settlers of Catan. Let's look at the code to implement all that. This code utilizes those set operators that we just saw in choosing the perfect group of people to invite for a game of Settlers of Catan. So up at the top here, I defined three new sets representing the friends in each of my social networks. And I do that by creating a list of those friends' names, and then I call the set function on that list, which will return a set. So once I have my three sets assigned to variables, I wanted to merge them all into one massive set. And to do that, I use the union function. And so you can see down here, I take my Facebook set, I call the union function on it, uh, passing in my Google friends set. And what this piece of code here is going to do is it'll return a new set representing the merger of my Facebook and Google friends. And then on that new set, I'm going to call the union operator one more time, this time passing in my MySpace friends. And so now this entire statement will have returned a set uh, containing all of my friends merged together. And so I assign that to the variable of all friends. And I've created some print statements throughout this code, uh, which basically print out the size of uh, the set at various points. And so you can see here, I have 19 unique friends in all. And I get that value using the len function, which returns the number of items in a set. So after I'd merged my sets into one massive set, I wanted to figure out who actually lives nearby. And so here I create a set representing my local phone book. And on that set of all friends, I use the intersection operator and pass in the phone book as a parameter. And so what this is going to do is it'll return the set of items that exist in both my all friends set and in the phone book set. And so I take that result and I assign it to a variable of local friends. And you can see here, based on that print statement, I only have seven friends who actually live nearby. So once I narrowed it down to my local friends, uh, the next thing that I did was I realized that there's a game of Munchkin going on, and I did not want to invite those guys over for Settlers of Catan. So here I've defined the Munchkin nerds, and I use the difference operator to remove them from my local friends set. So I call local friends dot difference and pass in the Munchkin nerds, and so this will return a uh, new set, which is the local friends minus anything that exists in Munchkin nerds and I assign that to a new variable called friends to invite. So you remember here at this point we had narrowed it down to three friends to invite and that's when uh, Vern gave me a call to see if him and Jim could come over. So if I want to check and see if an element or an item exists within a set uh, there's a couple different ways you can do that. Uh, the first one here that I want to show you is if you want to check and see if an individual item exists within a set you can just use the in operator. So if I just wanted to see if Vern existed in my friends to invite set, I could call Vern in friends to invite. And this statement here will return true or false depending on whether or not Vern exists in friends to invite. So I've done that here for Vern. I've also done the same thing for David. You can see the result up here is that, as you remember, we had invited Vern because he's a good friend, uh, but we had not invited David because he was going to be playing Munchkin instead. So that's, that's how you can, uh, you can check to see if an individual element exists within a set. If we want to check to see if multiple elements or an, a set exists within another set, that's where we can use the is subset operator. So I wanted to check and see if Jim and Vern were both invited. And so here I've created a set representing Jim and Vern. And I call the is subset operator on that set. And I pass in the friends to invite as the parameter. And so you can kind of read this like a, uh, a sentence, a, a question statement. I say, Jim and Vern is a subset of friends to invite, question mark. And this will return true or false, depending on whether or not Jim and Vern exist within friends to invite. And so as we saw, I had invited both Jim and Vern, 
And so up here we can see that that statement did indeed in return true. And so the last thing I did was I realized I didn't want to invite Jim and Vern after all because we'd get into a fight. Uh, so I got a list of Olivia's co-workers from her. And so I took that list here, which does include Jim and Vern because they are actually Olivia's co-workers. Uh, and I used my set function to turn that into a set. So then to get the set that represents those two sets minus anything they have in common, I use the symmetric difference operator. And I've done one thing different here. I've actually used the update variation of the symmetric difference operator. And that is the mutable variation. And what that means is this uh, operator is not going to return a new copy of a set representing the result of the symmetric difference operation. It's going to take the result of the symmetric difference between friends to invite and Olivia's coworkers and assign that result directly into the friends to invite. As you can see here at the very end I print out the uh, contents of that friends to invite which represents the people I intend to invite over for Settlers of Catan. I hope this video helped you to visualize sets as an unordered collection of items and to understand how the set operators can be used to manipulate those sets. Now I had a lot of fun making these videos over the past couple of weeks and seeing the student feedback on the forum about how the videos had helped them really made it all worthwhile. So I want to end by saying thank you. Uh, it's meant a lot to me that people are watching these and as always, happy programming.